Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and I hope you're hungry because today I'm discussing Pizza My Heart, a rom-com based on Romeo and Juliet that surprisingly features very little pizza and a lot of close-up shots of the actors. I had watched this movie several years back and had mostly forgotten about it due to its forgettable nature, but was reminded of it when I saw a Drew Gooden video on a movie called Little Italy starring Hayden Christensen, and I thought to myself, hey, did this movie rip off Pizza My Heart, the original pizza-centric Romeo and Juliet parody film? No, it didn't. But seeing as though I went through the trouble of watching and buying this movie for $5.99, I may as well riff on it. Plus, I'm a walking Chicagoan stereotype. I love pizza. That being said, the pizza shown in the introduction is not exactly churning my butter. Why does it look so disgusting? Oh, neat, it's the actor from Night at the Roxbury. I know he's a prolific actor, but he will always be Mr. Butabi in my heart. Oh, Mr. S, <laughs> you kill me! Mr. Sanderson! <laughs> what? Our story takes place in Verona. No, not that Verona. Verona, New Jersey. In the heart of the city exist two competing pizza places, Montebello's and Prestolani's, each owned by a husband and wife team. After making a pizza with his father, Vinny, Joe Montebello runs off because he is late for an appointment. He gently runs off to the train station where he bumps into Gina Prestolani and knocks a portfolio of photographs from her hands. Aw, oh, what a nice meet cute. Wow, you're real pretty. Thank you, I love you. He runs off to catch his train and Gina half-acidly puts her photographs back into her portfolio. They're just gonna fall out again. It's not heavy. It's flour, come on! Oh, I love that new Holly song. It ain't heavy, it's just flour. Gina! Gina. Who's that? Gina! Oh, it's my daughter. Gina is home from college, where she studied in Chicago, represent, to be a photographer. Her controlling father, Lou, feels that there isn't any money in the arts and presses her to become a teacher. You'll make much more money being a teacher. Ah, yes, teachers, the most overpaid of professions. We also meet Gina's feisty sister, Annette, who is written to be bitterly jealous of Gina. What was I thinking? I can't decorate. I don't have a degree in visual arts. Meanwhile, Joe is playing some poker with his chef buddies and they are playing for recipes. Heavy cream, mm, yeah. juice of a lemon. Oh, oh Sorrento! <laughs> lemons! lemons. Yeah. Fuck yeah, lemons! Chef Tommy puts in his lobster risotto and asks Joe to match the bet with his famous pizza sauce, but Joe folds, saying it wasn't worth it. Wait, you had four nines? One of the players happens to be a businessman looking to open a franchise and is intrigued by Joe's sauce, wanting to strike up a deal. The night continues with a welcome home party for Gina. To Gina on your return to Verona. The movie likes to mention Verona a lot. Just in case you forgot, this is a Romeo and Juliet parody. We now see that the two families share a backyard separated by a brick wall. I guess they also share a power supply, which looks insanely dangerous. Mr. Montebello, or Vinny, is pissed by the loud noises of the party and wants to spray their hose all over everyone. Seems mature. On top of pressing Gina to become a teacher, Lou also wants her to marry a family friend and also their new manager named Carlo. She makes a run for it and Annette sweeps in and pounces, obviously infatuated with him. Gina goes to retrieve a balloon that got stuck in the Montebello's lemon tree while Joe goes up to pick lemons and boom, love at second sight. You. You. No, you. She explains the party is for her and as a graduation gift, he gives her a lemon. I'm sorry, I forgot to wrap it. My God, I want to fuck this man. Right as they are about to kiss, Vinny short circuits the power supply and Gina falls, caught by Carlo. Glad to see you still falling for me. Ew. Carlo apologizes for not picking her up at the station and says he hopes she'll forgive her because... You're my girl. Ew. Now the power is out and Lou is pissed, but he doesn't want to talk things out with the Montebellos due to their historic rivalry. I just realized that Montebello is a portmanteau of Portobello and Montague. <laughs> Man, if you love Romeo and Juliet with mushroom references, this is the film for you. Prestolani explains that his great, 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 great grandfather made the very first pizza in Verona, Italy, and the Montebello stole the idea as told through these questionable illustrations. Okay, so this started in Italy centuries ago. Why is this still happening? How in the world did these two families end up in the same backyard in Verona, New Jersey? The next morning at church, Joe and Gina do some steamy eye banging. A religious experience indeed. While Joe moves seats, he knocks over the usher and everybody busts up laughing? Yeah, he, he fell. It's so funny. This is a house of worship. Now sit down and continue to give us your money. After mass, the priest welcomes Gina back home and says he's looking forward to having her teach preschool at the church. She's surprised to learn that her dad applied for her? Can you do that? 
Can you write out an application for someone else and get them an interview? That doesn't seem right. Joe tells Vinny that the businessman from the poker game wants to try their pizza in hopes of franchising, but he's reluctant to franchise the restaurant since that would mean sharing the sauce recipe. However, he is willing to talk about it if it means putting the Prestellanis out of business. Joe calls the businessman, Jean-Paul, and asks him to come to the town's festival. Prestellanis is also getting ready for the occasion. Tonight, we show the Montebellos what pizza is made of! You know, cheese and stuff. Gina isn't really enthused about going to the feast until Carlo tells her they're setting up across for Montebello's. Why do characters in rom-coms always rely on seeing each other at events? You know you can just go to each other's restaurant and ask each other out, right? Looks like Jean-Paul is going to make it to the feast. There too. Verona, New Jersey. How many times are they going to mention Verona? Verona. 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 Find me a Switzerland in Verona, New Jersey now. Gina gets all dressed up to impress Joe and look. I'm sorry. If I were going to woo a guy, this is not what I would wear. She looks like she's going back to church. Annette looks longingly at a photo of her and Carlo, and instead of telling Gina about it, she just gets angry at everything. At the food fest, both families reveal their leaning tower of pizzas, a truly original idea that no one has ever done before. Lou and Vinny proceed to sling insults at each other. Honestly, what is the big deal about this? I used to impressively stack my White Castle boxes and nobody applauded me. Carlo goes to Lou and asks permission to propose to Gina via stuffing a ring into a cannoli. Really? Stop it. Get some help. Lou tells Carlo he'll tell his daughter to meet him by the Ferris wheel. Now we get a string of terrible miscommunications which cause the film's conflict. Jean-Paul runs into Gina and asks where he can find the best pizza in town. Not knowing it was for Joe and Montebello's, Gina naturally guides him to Prestolani's. Uh-oh. On top of that, Gina never goes to the Ferris wheel because she wants to follow Joe. Annette goes instead, who is thrilled to be near Carlo. The very first Ferris wheel was built by George Washington Ferris. For the 18th. 93 exposition in Chicago. World's Fair reference, aw yeah. Gina meets up with Joe and they flirt a little bit. Joe even reminisces about how when they were 10, Gina threw a football at him so hard it caused a scar. A scar that happens to be under his chin so the audience can never see it. So this is confusing. The movie actually implies that they hadn't really known each other or even met previously, especially during the first and second meet cutes where they don't recognize each other or acknowledge each other's names. But that wouldn't make sense if they grew up next to each other, so did the movie try to fix that by weaseling in this thing they did as kids? Keep in mind, they were living at home up until college. They wouldn't have changed that much. They should recognize each other. Especially if Gina once clobbered him with a football. It's really confusing. At the fest, Gina and Joe meet up at a gazebo and try each other's pizza, and again, honestly cute. Good chemistry, questionable looking pizza. Also, this pizza is not what was shown in the intro. Yeah, I'm being pedantic, but I'm from Chicago. I care about pizza continuity. I do approve of this date though. I'm down for being hand-fed pizza. <laughs> Joe asks her about Carlo, and she says it's complicated, even though it's not, and she has no interest in him. You know what's complicated? Rubik's Cube? You know what's complicated? Algebra? You know what's complicated? The Godfather 2? You know what's complicated? Ooh, uh, porcupines. You know what's complicated? Taxes? You know what's complicated? Knowing if your YouTube channel is going to get a copyright strike or not? We spent our whole lives on the other side of a wall from each other and we have absolutely no idea who the other person is. Yeah, seems easier than the cube. Later that night, Annette is learning about dogs, I guess? Chihuahua, a small breed of Mexican dog. Why is she reading this out loud to nobody? Annette thinks Gina is acting funny. She notices sauce on her sweater, tastes it, and says, this is too good to be our sauce. More conflict arises as Lou's wife tells him they're going out of business. We need to talk about the books. You know how I feel about books. I like waiting for the movie to come out. Very funny. Annette spies on Gina and sees her with Joe and for some reason is pissed? I feel like she should be happy because that means Carlo is freed up, right? It wouldn't be a rom-com without a cute dinner date. Chef Tommy from the poker game lets Joe come to his restaurant after hours and use the kitchen in return for some lemons, which are special because they come from his grandmother's lemon tree. She always said be kind to the tree and the tree will be kind to you. What does that mean? 
I have no idea. Red flag, he doesn't know what being kind means. Hey, remember this hobby I have? While Joe cooks an amazing dinner for Gina, they start talking about their lives, and Joe says he couldn't become a chef like he wanted because his dad had a heart attack, so he took over as head chef at Montebello's. He looks very sad about it. Great time to take a picture! I have to mention that even though this movie isn't so great with comedy, there's a pretty funny scene where Joe says his brother Nicky cannot be head chef because he burns everything. He can't be that bad. <laughs> Can he? Fire in the it was a clever little edit. It got a laugh out of me. Gina buys Joe a watch from a street vendor because he doesn't wear one since his days are so redundant anyway. Those are knockoffs. You might have gotten ripped off. Dude, he's right there. Carlo is still pining for Gina and Annette feels bad, so she tells him she doesn't feel the same way for him and that she is out with Joe Montebello. He loses his mind, then everybody else loses their mind. They're caught red-handed, and we get several back-and-forth scenes of Gina and Joe's dads screaming at them. So now everyone is tense. Vinny tells Joe that Gina must be up to something, that she's targeting him for an attack. And what do you know? At that very moment, John Paul calls. It's revealed that he tried the wrong pizza because Gina unknowingly brought him to the Prestolani booth. Because he has no intention of talking about this obvious miscommunication, Joe is hurt. Meanwhile, Lou is over the moon that Gina took business from the Montebellos, and Gina realizes she made a huge mistake. Joe gives Carlo the watch to give back to Gina, and Carlo makes one last plea for her to be with him instead. What the? Hello? Why are you watching them? Who is that? <laughs> Stop that. Get some help. You're like uh, a lost ship, and I'm the keeper. You're broken, let me fix you. These kind of conflicts and rom-coms are so frustrating and unbelievable. I just cannot buy that these two wouldn't talk about it after having such intimate moments. Look, they did a cheese poll. I do see how it once again tries to mimic Romeo and Juliet, seeing as though that story had one of the biggest miscommunications of all time. Hopefully this movie doesn't end in death. It's time for some shenanigans. You see, Jean-Paul now wants to give both restaurants a shot since he liked Prestolani's, so of course the families try to sabotage each other. The Montebellos dump mice in Prestolani's during their presentation, and the Prestolani's sabotage the power supply during the Montebellos, and is it just me, or is the mice a little more serious? The electricity could be the fault of the city. The mice just seems unhygienic. Jean-Paul is getting pissed. They all meet at the church to talk things out. Gina asks if she can explain what happened to Joe, and he gives her the cold shoulder like a giant asshole. Jean-Paul says they have one week to make the best all-around pizza, but no sabotage is allowed. Carlo is going to take on the challenge of making the sauce. You know I love challenges, Lou. Just give me one week. One week, Lou. One week. Just one week. <laughs> I love this acting. It's been one week, Lou. Nikki, this sweet summer child, is the only one who understands how dumb this all is. He tells Joe that Gina is perfect for him and that he needs to pursue her. Joe climbs the ladder and, wait a minute, has Gina been there the entire time? Did she not hear them? Joe offers some balsamic vinegar as a peace offering, telling her to taste it from his finger. It's not poison. All right, another Romeo and Juliet reference. We got poison. So here's the thing about this scene. She does forgive him, but she never explains what happened, which frankly pisses me off. Joe says he's sorry for overreacting, but does that mean he's still going to think that she somehow did this on purpose and he's just okay with it? I don't know. Why didn't she tell him it was an accident? In his defense, maybe he realized it was an accident. Maybe he always knew he was overreacting. But still, I, I wanted her to advocate for herself. Gina goes to her dad and actually proposes that they drop out of the challenge because the contract was originally for the Montebellos and her dipshit father says she has to choose between them and Joe. I remember being happy. I remember being happy two days ago. So she picks Joe, and they're like, let's just run away and not tell anyone. You know what they say about facing your problems. Don't. While packing, Gina finds the photo of Carlo and Annette and realizes why her sister is always so angry at her. Holy fuck, this is moving fast. Joe brings his pizza delivery truck around and says his friend, Chef Tommy, can put them up in Chicago, but he wants lemons in return, so they stop back at the restaurant. Father Spezza is pissed at both families for being immature dum-dums and tries to get them to reconcile. You don't think I know what you did. But he does. And you will all burn in hell! See, now this is how you dress for a date. Annette finally tells Carlo how she feels and it is reciprocated. It's cute. After she locks up the restaurant, that balloon from earlier hits the faulty power supply and starts a fire. Joe and Gina find it and instead of, you know, calling the fire department, he hops the fence and tries to put it out himself. Meanwhile, on the other side, a wire comes down locking Gina into her spot as well. They both wait in the lemon tree. 
Mamma mia. Maybe this is going to end in tragedy? Everyone gets to the scene and both restaurants are destroyed. Somehow, somehow, Joe and Gina stayed safe in the tree. Up here. Okay, why are you throwing lemons at them? They can hear you. Also, were you in there the whole time? And you didn't call out to the firefighters for help? What are you doing? Everyone apologizes to everyone, and this ends the centuries-long feud between the Prestolanis and the Montebellos. Luckily, since they had a lot of time to talk in the tree, Gina and Joe decided to start a merger where they can join their sauce and their cheeses. And the new restaurant is called Pizza My Heart. Oh, sorry. Presto Bellos. These are all Gina Prestolani. She has a wonderful eye. Good job, Extra. Oh God, oh no. First Chicago, then Miami. Yeah, bring that shit to Chicago, see what happens. Everyone gets what they want and everything is awesome. Who love? <laughs> is this how it ends? On spinning screen caps. <laughs> Perfect, no notes. Okay, final thoughts. Listen. This was very cheesy, unlike the pizza in this film, but I have to admit that I enjoyed it and I would watch and riff on it again. It is a made-for-TV movie, so yes, parts were dramatic, but the pacing was good, the acting was good, and the chemistry between the characters was actually believable, even for a love at first sight story. The lead actress was very charming and very lovable and bubbly, the side characters were fun, and even the over-the-top parents were great. I don't think any of those things make it an objectively good film, but if you're looking to kill an hour 30, this isn't a bad way to do it. The Romeo and Juliet references did seem a little shoehorned, but it's fine, even if they did say Verona a million times. Verona. 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 Find me a Switzerland in Verona, New Jersey now. I'm sorry, where does this movie take place? Verona, New Jersey. Overall, a fun little romp with some disgusting looking pizza. I give it a 7 out of 10 calzones. If you have a suggestion for a weird made-for-TV movie that you'd like to see me cover, please leave a suggestion in the comments. Most of what I cover are viewer recommendations. Until next time. Who love? Hey everyone, thanks again for watching my video on Pizza My Heart, the only movie about pizza that didn't make me want to eat it. Ridiculous. If you want to see more from me, I have plenty to show you, but first I want to give a shout out to my patrons because they support this channel and make it possible for me to keep making videos. If you want to donate a few bucks, please check out my campaign, and if not, likes, shares, and especially comments help to combat the almighty and confusing algorithm. If you want to see more from me, I have a few recommendations on the screen. On the right is my latest video from my flagship series, that time on Murder, She Wrote, and on the left is a breakdown of some of the most ridiculous episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.